All right, so I just finished up this radiant in-floor system. Um, I wanted to just talk a little bit about it because this one's not unique, but it might be something you have not seen yourself as far as some of the abilities you have with radiant uh, in-floor heating um, and some of the customization and options that are available. So um, with this one, we're using a Navian Combi, um, and you can see here that there's a 10-port loop manifold um, installed and we actually have actuators on eight of the loops because in this specific system um, there's eight loops being utilized and two are going to be used uh, for a future um, heating zone so you might be wondering why there are actuators if you've never seen these um, what they are is actually just a solenoid that replaces the on off adjustment here so this is basically just an on off valve that you would be able to control each loop individually so if you unscrew this that'll open the loop if you closed it all the way that'll shut this individual loop off so what these are doing are actually opening and closing each loop now what the reason for that is because maybe you have for example eight or ten loops um, to cover your entire house but you actually want to be able to control many zones individually so in this case every bedroom and living area has its own zone um, so there will be a thermostat tied to every single one of these actuators and that's what the controllers are for up there now the reason we have two is just because um, the maximum you can control out of any of these zone controllers is up to about six uh, these are two four zone units so we have eight actuators we just split them in half um, and you can see, unfortunately, a lot of these come with, the actuators will come with wiring that's only so long. So uh, we ran out, we weren't able to run them all the way up to tie in. So what I did was use some of these terminal blocks here with these covers over the top of them. And uh, we extended all of the control wiring to be able to wire into the controller. So uh, what, what would happen is you'd have all of your thermostats, four thermostats into here, four thermostats into there, and each thermostat will control an actuator and control a specific loop that it is uh, corresponding to. So, um, of course, we went ahead and used a variable speed circulator, the Taiko, this is a VT2218 Delta T circulator. So, what this is going to enable this to do is adjust its speed according to how many zone valves are opening and closing. Now, you could get a Delta P pump that would try to maintain a constant pressure. Um, however, to me, if you've seen any of my other videos, you've heard me talk a lot about these Delta T pumps. Delta T is the way to go. Because in the end, that's what we care about. We care about that Delta that's going out into the supply versus what's coming back from your floor or your heat emitters. So essentially what will happen is if only one zone is calling for heat, and only one actuator opens up a single loop, this pump is likely going to run on its lowest setting because it's only trying to push up to about a, a gallon per minute for that one single loop. Um, however, this thing's capable of um, many more GPMs. It obviously depends on your head loss. Um, but for example, this thing could push about, uh, about 8 gallons a minute, maybe 9 up to 10 or so, depending on the longest loop length we have here. But let's say 10 gallons a minute, at um, I think about 12, 13, 14 feet ahead or so. So it's going to be able to cover this entire range of one through eight of these zones being open. And it's going to vary its speed depending on what. Now it doesn't know, it's not directly connected to the, to the zone valve. So what will happen is your boiler will be set to, for example, say 120 degree supply temperature. It's going to push out 120 degree water when one of these actuators opens. Now, if you have only one loop, you're going to have a delta T coming back of 20 degrees. So you might have 100 degree water returning back to the boiler. Now, if you open up three more zone valves, what's going to happen? I mean, basically what's going to happen is you're going to have this rush of cold water um, that's going to be returning from those loops that just opened up. So what this will do is kick up higher to maintain that 20 degree difference that you have this set to. So... Um, depending on the heat load. Now, it doesn't just mean it's going to correspond. It's also just going to correspond in general to the heat load um, that's needed. So if it's a warmer day and the floor is not pulling or, you know, if you're coming back with a delta T of 10, 
it could slow down the pump so that it so that it could try to maintain that 20 at all times. It'll speed up or slow down. Um, so it works perfect in situations with zone valves, especially this many. Um, it could cover the whole spectrum. So that way, if you do, if you just have a fixed speed pump, what you're going to end up with is if this thing's capable of pushing 10 GPMs, it's going to try and push 10 GPMs through all of them or a single one. So um, you really want you don't want to be overdriving a loop that's a bad design if you could uh, you know help it. So delta T circulators are absolutely the way to go with zone valves. Um, and honestly, almost every other system, it's it's the way to go as well. Um, so yeah, this is uh, this one. We're just gonna start packaging it up, start cutting some wood, uh, palletize it, and crate it up, and then uh, ship it out. Um, so check out our other videos. If you got any questions about this system, or want me to build your system, or want a design, just reach out. Um, subscribe if you haven't yet. And uh, with that said, see you guys in the next one.